Jared here with CarBuzz.com, and today I am driving the 2019 Hyundai Elantra Limited, which is the top trim model of the Elantra. Now, for 2019, Hyundai has given the Elantra a bold new facelift to help keep it competitive in the compact sedan segment. But is this facelift enough to keep it in line with the fully new Kia Forte, which is, rides on the same platform as the Elantra. That's what we're here today to find out. The big news up front is triangles. Lots and lots of triangles. That's basically what Hyundai has went here. You've got this angular new headlight with the new LEDs. You've got a different front grille. I'm not really a fan of the redesign, to be honest. However, I did run a poll on the CarBuzz Instagram to see whether or not people liked this or the new Kia Forte better. Now, I thought it would be a little bit of a landslide given that the new Forte looks like a baby stinger, but it was a lot closer than I thought, and people actually do like the way this new Elantra looks. I'm just not in that camp. Now, for 2020, I believe that Hyundai will go even more bold with the styling. Take a look at the new 2020 Hyundai Sonata, the bigger version of this car that was just revealed. That car has a radical new design, so I wouldn't be surprised if Hyundai goes even crazier when this car gets its full redesign, hopefully, in the next model year. Now, let's go take a look at the back, which I think is a little bit prettier and more subtle. Back here, I'm a little bit more of a fan of the 2019 styling. It's clean. It doesn't look too different from the 2018 model. I still miss that Hyundai Elantra from a few years ago, which had that real coupe-like design, but this is not too bad. I think it's more clean back here than up front for sure. Now let's go ahead and take it out on the road to see how it drives. All right, so as we test the power here, you can probably hear that engine groaning, but acceleration is decently smooth. So we're in the Elantra limited trim, which means only one engine and transmission is available. It is a two liter four cylinder engine, only gives 147 horsepower and 132 foot pounds of torque that goes out to a six speed automatic transmission. You could get a six speed manual, but only on the absolute base Elantra. So I don't necessarily recommend going for that unless you really, really love a basic car with a manual transmission. This six speed is fine. I actually prefer the CVT that Kia uses on their version of this car, the Forte. That being said, the transmission is fine. I really haven't found a lot of problems with it. So the fuel economy is excellent. The EPA rates this car at 28 MPG in the city, 37 on the highway and 32 MPG combined, but I have found myself besting that uh, during the week that I've been driving this car. I've averaged about 37 MPG, and on the highway, I was able to get about 43 MPG. So those numbers that you see in real life will actually maybe best what Hyundai and the EPA say it can do. So while you're driving, the ride comfort is very good. That's one of the things people are really going to like about the Elantra. It's pretty quiet even at high speeds. I think the steering is a bit of a weak point. It, it's light. It's pretty easy to maneuver, so no problems there. It's just not as engaging as I like to have in some compact vehicles. I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to test out some of the drive modes and tell you about those as the lane keep assist, make sure that I cross over and that I knew I crossed that line. All right, so now let's turn it off here. Give it some willy, there it goes. Engine groaning, but decent acceleration. So I have it now in its sport setting. You get three drive modes with the Elantra, normal, sport, and smart. Smart will kind of uh, switch between the two. I actually really enjoy smart mode. Uh, Hyundai and Kia do a very good job with those modes. Sport mode is going to make the steering just a little bit heavier, which I could do without. It's fine. Um, it makes the steering, you know, just 
have more weight to it, but it doesn't make it any more precise, so you're not going to feel like you're suddenly driving a sports car. But what I really wanted to show you is that since we're driving the Elantra Limited trim, I'm going to go ahead and set the adaptive cruise control. That's part of a package. The Limited trim doesn't come with that as standard, but this one that Hyundai sent us does have it. And it also comes with lane keep assist, which is going to steer the car basically on its own. So we're on a pretty straight road. So if I let go of the steering wheel, you're not going to see much, but we are about to come up on a pretty subtle turn. So I'm going to show you something that you probably shouldn't do at home, disclaimer, but I feel confident enough in the Elantra's abilities to show you on camera. That's it. We're turning. I don't even have my hands on the wheel. It's keeping us in the lane. And this car is practically driving itself as it alerts me to put my hands back on the wheel. You can't do it for too long. It will beep at you and tell you to put some pressure on the steering wheel. But for all intents and purposes, this car is driving itself. I know Tesla fanboys like to get all holier than thou that their cars can drive themselves. But look, I'm in a $27,000 Hyundai Elantra that's doing the exact same thing. It's following the car in front of me using adaptive cruise control and it's doing the steering all by itself. It really is impressive that even a low tier car like the Hyundai Elantra can basically drive itself in this day and age, which is very, very cool. Although you do have to opt for the highest trim level to have that sort of ability. So driving the Elantra is an okay experience, definitely not for the driving enthusiasts out there. If you love to drive and you want something a little quicker for the same money as this limited trim, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later, you can get the Elantra Sport, which is a very different model indeed. So now let's pull over and let's talk about the Elantra's interior, which is a bit of a weak point compared to some of its competitors. Now that we're inside, let's take a look at the Elantra's interior, where I think the design is good, but some of the execution could be better. It all starts off with these really nice gauges. It has sort of a checkerboard flag design. I think that looks really nice. They're clear and concise, and you do get this little helper screen in the middle. You can have your driver information, your fuel economy, all of your driving assist features up there. You also have automatic headlights on this model and all of your adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring and lane keeping assisting is housed over here to the left of the steering wheel. Up here, we have Hyundai's incredibly good infotainment system. I think this is one of the best in the business. It's a basic touchscreen, but with quick and responsive uh, feedback. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the map. Voice command is excellent on this, so you can input destinations with ease. You just push the voice command button on the wheel, say where you want to go, and the navigation system will take you there. The navigation is, of course, part of an optional package for around $3,350. It's called the Ultimate Package, and you can only get that on this fully loaded limited trim. You also get dual zone automatic climate control. That's very easy to control. You can just push this button for auto if you want it to raise the fan speed at the chosen temperature that you have here. We also have our USB and aux jacks down here with a little handy storage. And if you'll notice, it says QI on it. That's because this area right here, if you have a phone with the capability, you can wirelessly charge. Six speed automatic transmission. You do have a sport mode here. Doesn't really change how the car drives too greatly, but it will increase the uh, shift pattern so it will hold gears for a little longer. If I put it in reverse, you have a pretty darn good camera. And as you can see, as I turn the steering wheel, it does give you trajectory lines. You can change your drive modes. Uh, that's what I showed you while we were out on the road with this little button here. And you do have heated seats. Unfortunately, unlike the all new Kia Forte, you can't get ventilated seats on the Elantra. I find that a little bit disappointing, but I believe that Hyundai will probably add that in the next model year. And the materials, they're good in some spots, but I'm a little disappointed with how much cheap plastic there is. I think Kia just did a better job with the redesign of the Forte, but I'm going to give Hyundai the benefit of the doubt 
And I think they're going to integrate some of these changes into the 2020 model year. So now let's go ahead and check out the back seat where legroom is pretty adequate. Back here, legroom is pretty good. I have them treated to 35.7 feet of legroom. I have the power memory driver seat placed in my position and I can sit pretty comfortably behind myself. I can actually cross my feet with ease, not too bad. It's actually about the same size as a Jetta, I think a little bigger actually. The one thing is headroom is not that great. I'm pretty sure. I think if you were a little bit taller than me, your head would be touching. It's also kind of hot back here because although I have the AC on up front, there are no rear air vents to uh, put airflow back here to keep me cool. Also, not too much to wow at back here. You do have a basic armrest with two cup holders, and that's about it. These seats do fold down into the trunk, which let's go ahead and check out. So let's finish up our practicality segment with the trunk. Now, you may search around for an exterior trunk release, but you will not find it. There is none. I feel like that's a big... Uh, uh, absence that needs to be there. So you have to open it either on the key or from the interior. Once it pops open, you're treated to 14.4 cubic feet of storage. I just got out of a Jetta GLI that had a little bit less than that. So this is pretty good storage, although it does have basic hinges, which are going to take up some of your taller items if you do pile a lot in here. But it is still pretty practical if you're a young a uh, college student on the go, or even a little old lady, you'll be able to fit a ton of stuff in here. Just pull these tabs and the rear seats do fold flat to offer a bit more storage. But if you really want more hauling capacity, I recommend opting for the Elantra GT hatchback, which does have more storage space than this. So now let's go ahead and price out our 2019 Elantra Limited, the top level of the 2019 Elantra. So let's price out our 2019 Hyundai Elantra Elantra, you've basically got six trim levels to choose from. The base SE model is going to start at $17,100, although that's pretty basic. I don't recommend getting that one. Stepping up to the SEL trim for $19,400 is going to add a whole lot of stuff, including 16-inch alloy wheels, a 7-inch touchscreen forward collision avoidance, blind spot monitoring, and automatic headlights. Uh, the value addition, I recommend stepping up to that for $20,400 over the SEL. It's called value addition for a reason. That's going to get you keyless entry with push button start, a sunroof and blind spot monitoring all for a little over about $1,000 more than the SEL trim. For $1,000 more, that's the trim I recommend if you're trying to stay on a budget. There's also an eco trim that's $20,950. That's pretty interesting. You get a 1.4 liter turbocharged engine made into a seven speed dual clutch instead of the two liter four cylinder we have in this car. If fuel economy is your number one pricern, concern, the Eco is the trim you're going to want. We have the limited trim. That's $22,600. That's going to get you leather, heated seats, dual automatic climate control, all of those sort of things. Our car has the ultimate package for $3,350. That's going to add in the navigation. You're going to get the bigger color screen in between the gauges. You're going to get forward collision avoidance, and you're going to get that smart cruise control as well as memory seats for the power driver seat. So this is definitely the most loaded trim you can get. However, it's not the one that I would choose. For the same exact amount of money, $22,600, you can get the Elantra Sport. So instead of a two liter four cylinder, you're gonna be getting a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine. That's good for 201 horsepower. You're also gonna get things like a multi-link rear suspension, uh, sportier suspension, better brakes, and a more aggressive front and rear rear fascia. That's the model that you're going to want if you're an enthusiast. It comes with a six-speed manual transmission as standard, or for $1,100 more, you can opt for a seven-speed dual clutch. And for my money, if I was going to spend just over $22,000 on an Elantra, it would be the sport trim by far. So now that we've gone over pricing, let's go ahead and step out and give a car buzz ranking to the 2019 Elantra. 
So now that we've driven the Elantra and we've checked out the interior and the trunk space, let's go ahead and give it our final car buzz ranking. The big problem that I see here with the 2019 Elantra is that it is just a facelift, whereas the Kia Forte, which I absolutely adored and has quite a bit more features that I really like, is just newer and a little bit nicer to drive than Hyundai's version of this car. I'm going to give it a worth a look because it's still a cheap, affordable car with a ton of features, but I think you're gonna be better off buying the Kia Forte. And if you like this review and you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe to the Car Buzz YouTube channel and hit the notification bar so you can be alerted when new videos pop up just like this one. And check out the Car Buzz app on iOS and Android to keep up with the latest and greatest in automotive news and to see more reviews just like this one, including the full written review of this 2019 Elantra, which you can see in the link below. Also in the link below, you can click for more deals and information about the 2019 Elantra. Hope you've enjoyed the video. See you next time.